Hey guys, welcome back to Slick Triggers. Today we're gonna do a honeymoon review of the P320 Max, uh, made by Six Hour. Um, I've had the gun for a few months now and I've shot about a thousand rounds through it, uh, so I think I'm ready to give you guys an opinion on it. Thanks. My want for this gun came a few years ago when I picked up and handled a 320 Legion at the pawn shop. I saw that it was pretty expensive and I was waiting on paperwork for another pistol that I was buying at the time. So I asked to check the Legion out because I wanted to know how an $1,100 pistol felt. I immediately noticed it had a good bit of heft and the ergonomics felt really good. I didn't buy the pistol at the time, but I always thought about it after that. Fast forward to the first time I shot an IDPA match and a USPSA match, and it seemed like a ton of people had these pistols. I asked around and everyone had really good things to say about them. I'd watch guys shoot with these and uh, they seemed to do really well especially when they had a dot mounted. Prior to that, I thought the dot was kind of more of a Gucci gun accessory and didn't think it was absolutely necessary. But after talking uh, to the guys, basically everybody agreed that uh, the dot really did help, especially the distance. Now, I'm not saying that you need a gun with a dot or a gun with a metal or tungsten infused frame to be competitive. There's plenty of guys running out there shooting long slide uh, Glocks and doing really well. For me though, I wanted to have uh, comparable and competitive equipment. That way if I did bad at a match, I can't blame the equipment. I'd have to take full responsibility and work on it. So if I roll some footage, uh, it'll be from a steel challenge match I shot. I shot a little slow, but ended up winning the match for center fire pistol out of, a, out of about nine people. There were really only three people shooting with an optic, so I guess it wasn't uh, the most fair match. Uh, but the 320 did really well. Um, also, it's kind of cold out that day, so I think it kind of dissuaded a lot of people from showing up at the match. So, uh, But okay, now let's talk about the pistol. So it comes with four 21-round magazines out of the box and a Romeo 3 ma uh, Max mounted. Uh, it comes with a rubber um, shipping cover. Uh, here's the rubber shipping cover. A challenge coin. Uh, two recoil springs, so it comes with um, one in the gun already installed and then a, a spare recoil spring. And I think that's about it. Um, as you can see, it's just in a basic SIG box. Uh, it's kind of crazy. I spent as much as my first car on this pistol and it just came with the same basic box as any other SIG pistol. Uh, it's really nothing fancy. I, I think uh, I think it's the whole idea about the pistol, though. You know, it's a workhorse pistol. It's really not for show. It has a job to do. Honestly, I don't mind the box it comes in either. There's nothing wrong with it. You can fit two pistols in it, or you can fit, uh, you know, your pistols and magazines in it. Some of the other 320s do come in fancier boxes, and they come uh, with more stuff, like a free-range bag. We're looking at you, Legion. So here, for instance, is the box that my 320 or 365 came in. So it's a, you know, as you'll notice, it's shadowed. It came with two magazines, but I have one loaded, so I didn't want to drag it out and put it in the box and unload it and all that good stuff. But a lot of uh, gun manufacturers, they do have a little bit better boxes. But when you're buying the 320 Max, I guess you're not really, you know, buying it for the box per se. Uh, you're kind of buying it as a tool. So here's a HK VP9. So as you can see, HK, they did a really good job um, shadowing the pistol out and I, I really like the box for the H&K pistols. Most people that have the 320 Max are probably going to go to something like this, like a soft gun case. This little plastic um, optic cover, it's really loose, so... You're not going to be using this to run around the range to protect your optic. I noticed at the steel challenge that as I was spray painting targets, you know, I thought, man, it'd be a really a real shame if I got, you know, spray paint overspray on my optics. So I went ahead and, and bought this optic cover from uh, Range Panda. It wasn't that expensive. It, it shipped pretty quick too, but it looks like just a 3D printed um, cover. And, you know, this thing isn't going anywhere. You can attach this while the gun's in your holster and that should protect it from like, you know, spray paint overspray or uh, somebody runs into you you know, at the range, so you don't like ding up your optic, optic or anything, or I don't know, you know, accidentally scratch it on a, on a jagged piece of metal or something like that. Mm -hmm. 
So I bought this at a local gun shop in the shooting range. Uh, when I bought it, I noticed the optic had a few small dings on it. Uh, and the grease that was supposed to come with the gun was missing. And the spare recoil spring wasn't in the box. The camera may not pick it up, but uh, there's just like a little bit of wear on the optic. I will mention there's a little bit of paint missing uh, here on the optic. I think someone used a screwdriver to pop out the optic battery tray, which would have been a uh, worker at the SIG factory. Uh, it didn't matter to me too much because I'm using this one as a matching competition gun. So I'm sure it's going to get a little bit dinged up. And then here's the spare recoil spring that six and over. So the gun had the 12 pound recoil spring installed and they sent me a 14 pound recoil spring. I still have the 12 pound installed. So somebody I think took the 14 one out and installed a 12 one or maybe they ran out of the recoil springs at the factory and uh, just had to ship it out either way. But um, so customer service is great. You know, they sent a free charge and it, it came pretty quick too. So it comes with a Magwell, which is illegal in the USPSA carry optics division. You can use it for dry firing so you don't chew up your magazine well too badly. It's easy to install and uninstall, so it's really no big deal. All you need is an Allen key. And the inside of the Magwell in the frame is also beveled. Uh, it has a good size opening. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty good uh, Magwell built into the frame. So this is my first dot, and the Romeo 3 Max has been great. It has a huge window, so it's pretty easy to pick up the dot. If you notice, the pistol doesn't have any iron sights installed, and I actually prefer this. I knew this was going to be my first dot, and I'd have to learn how to use it. I didn't want the iron sights there because I felt like they might, uh, I might use them as a crutch under pressure. I didn't want to get into a situation where I was leaning on the iron sights and then using the dot as secondary. I also didn't want to subconsciously try to line up the iron sights. It's much cleaner with just the dot, but take it with a grain of salt because like I said, this is my first dot gun. If it was defensive, maybe I'd want a lower co third uh, witness, but no issues at all yet with the dot. Zero fast and has held at zero. It has shake away in a wide variety of dot options, uh, brightness options. Uh, you can easily cycle the brightness up and down, which is really nice. If you want to click it up a few, you can. And if you want to click it down a few, you can. Um, you don't have to go, say, like all the way up in brightness and then all the way down. It has a wide variety of um, dot brightness options. And it has a, a 6 MOA dot, uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, at first, I was a little bit hesitant to buy a pistol with no mounting options for iron sights, just in case I didn't like the dot. But then I remembered this is a 320, and I can literally get a full slide with iron sights delivered to my door. A lot of manufacturers make them really not a big deal let's talk about accuracy this gun is very accurate the first time i took it to the range it was in uh, inside range to zero the optic i shot at 7 15 and 25 yards i blew the bullseye out of the target the barrel that comes with the gun is great i don't see any reason for myself to ever upgrade it let's talk about recoil uh, it's way better than any of my other polymer guns i think the only uh, softer nine millimeter i've ever shot is a Breda 92, uh, 92. Uh, and that's a real metal frame pistol and it's kind of known for soft recoil uh, this thing gets back on target really quickly and has a great balance uh, it's a true pleasure to shoot usually with a nine millimeter polymer gun i feel a touch sore in the wrist after a long session nothing crazy um but I, I'll, I'll know if i've shot the day before uh, i have some kind of like wrist and nerve issues that causes a lot of wrist pain uh, with this gun i don't feel it after the range uh, or the next day it's it's a real pleasure to shoot you know, this slide with an optic on it, it even feels like a little bit lighter of a slide than, say, an HK or a Glock. So I don't know if it's just the model or if I'm imagining it, it, but when you take the slide with the optic assembly and the barrel off, it feels lighter than um, the slide and the barrel assembly for like an HK or, or Glock 19 at least. I don't have a scale, so I can't be sure, but that's just something that I've noticed. Um, also, it does come with two Allen keys for the optic to zero the optic. Uh, here's the VP9. It has a, uh, a much lower uh, bore axis, uh, but the, the 320 uh, recoil is considerably less uh, than the 
59 uh, polymer frame at least and that's made uh, mainly um, due to the uh, tungsten frame with the added um, tungsten weight and you know probably the longer slide too and i don't know if the slide is lighter and that contributes to recoil it's something i suspect but i don't know for sure um so uh, i don't know if you'll be able to see it but if you look down in here um, that shiny part right here there's like a hole down here maybe if i get it just right yeah i guess you can kind of see it right there but so there's a, a tungsten weight here and you can actually get a pick or a screwdriver or something and you could push this tungsten weight up and out of the frame so it's an insert and also i believe the polymer in the entire frame itself is also tungsten infused so if you compare it if you compare it to polymer frame of the vp9 this thing you know it feels like it would just blow away in the wind Whereas this thing, uh, it, it still has a, a pretty decent heft to it. I don't have a scale, so I can't give you exact numbers, but you, you can definitely feel a difference when you pick the, the guns up side by side. When I have these two slide assemblies in my hand, I mean, it feels like the VP9 slide assembly is just a touch heavier than the 320 Max slide assembly, even with the optic installed, which is, you know, I think it's kind of odd. I don't know if that contributes to recoil or not. The 320 Max also has a, a big stainless steel rod, and, you know, this is what allows you to change out those recoil springs. So it's got a 1911 style recoil spring. You can just slide it out and, you know, I guess you can install whatever recoil spring you want. And that's how it goes back in. It's a little bit trickier. The VP9, it has a flat spring recoil design, which is supposed to mitigate recoil. And then also it's a captive recoil spring. So it's a lot easier to uninstall and reinstall, but you know, you can't change it for a lighter spring weight. Personally, I've, I've come to like the lighter spring weight of the 320 Max. It allows you to manipulate the slide a lot easier. And also you can run a little bit lighter loads. So, you know, you guys saw me fiddling with the 320 Max earlier and, you know, I can cock it with, uh, you know, just minimal pressure. So the VP9 Tactical, I believe this one has like the same recoil spring as the uh, 40 caliber uh, VP9, but you know, it's a little bit of a bear. Um, you know, I suppose if, if you were someone with limited dexterity or you had an injury, having the, the lighter recoil springs would be beneficial to you. So, I mean, I can cock this one. I don't even, you know, here's a flat hand. Also the 320s, as I'm sure everyone knows by now, it's a, it's a chassis design. So if you knock this pin out, you can remove the trigger control group and you can switch out the grip. Okay, so I've, I feel like I've come full circle with the way I think about pistols now. I know in the past, a lot of pistols were metal frame. I think nowadays most pistols sold are polymer because polymer, I'm sure, is much cheaper to manufacture. Uh, personally, I don't carry a full-size gun, so currently I much prefer a heavier pistol because they are just so much better to shoot. I think a metal frame or a polymer with tungsten and fused frame like this one uh, is better than a polymer pistol in just about every aspect except for daily carry. Okay, let's talk about the trigger. It's pretty light. Uh, it's a rolling brake. It's not a super clean glass uh, light brake of the VP9, but it's not bad. I wouldn't mind lightening the trigger a little bit, but I'm gonna see how it breaks in. The action of the pistol pre-cocks the striker, 
it's not like a Glock in the way that you're pulling the striker back when you're pulling the trigger. The striker on the 320 is always cocked, so it, it should feel more like a single action or a crisp break, but it, I don't know. To me, it, it does feel more like a rolling break. Either way, it's fine, though. It's definitely not a bad trigger at all. So here's the trigger pull. So he, I'm on the wall right here, and then it's a little bit of creep, and then there's the break, and then here's the reset. So, I mean, it's, it's not the best trigger in the world. Like, I, I really wish it had a, uh, a trigger more like the VP9, where here I'm on a, a, a firm wall, and then it's like breaking glass. And then pretty short uh, take up, and, you know, the VP9, it really pushes your finger forward. But, I mean... <laughs> The 320, it's, it's, it's really not bad, though. It's, it's a pretty good trigger, honestly. It's, it's pretty good, honestly. Yeah, okay, so let's talk about the controls. The controls are uh, situated perfectly for me. So the module itself is really the big thing that drove me towards this gun. I could have bought a, a long slide for my VP9 and used it, but the controls on that platform don't work as well for my hands. And also the weight wasn't there. Uh, so I really like the controls on the 320 Max. Uh, my, finger, my finger fits the trigger shoe very well. I don't have to uh, break my grip to drop the mag. The slide release is in the perfect position where I don't hit it unintentionally, uh, but I can hit it intentionally very easily. Uh, the takedown lever is at this perfect spot where you can hang a thumb on it, and uh, that actually really helps out a lot. I don't know why more manufacturers don't do something like this, uh, if you think about the strongest fingers you have in your hand, they're really going to be your thumbs. And if you have the real estate on the pistol to hang your thumbs, you can really mitigate recoil. But when you have just like a slick side, I mean, you're really kind of wasting a good opportunity. Although I guess the VP9 has a little bit of a takedown lever, but it's it's just not, it doesn't protrude well enough. The slide serrations are great too. I've really grown to love the way they look. Um, they kind of have like a, a triangulated design. Uh, but yeah, just great controls. When I have a firing grip on the gun, you know, there's no way for me to accidentally knock that release. Um, you know, I can drop it very easily. This gun, uh, the size on the frame says medium. I guess that would be one drawback. I don't think that you can buy the 320 Max with a larger frame already installed. So if, if you did want a 320 Max with a large or small frame module, I guess you'd have to custom build it because I, I don't think the SIG sells there like ready to go firearms, you know, with large or small frame modules. So, and the frame modules are pretty expensive too. Okay, so now let's talk about why you might choose this gun over uh, various options. So you would obviously buy this pistol over many of the polymer pistols due to the weight of the tungsten module. Uh, you probably buy this over a full metal frame pistol like the CZ Shadow due to the price difference. Uh, and the Shadow, it, it has a few drawbacks of its own, but I won't get into them in this video. So uh, maybe a lot of you might also be asking, you know, why you would buy this over a 320X. I heavily considered buying a 320 Legion before picking up the Max. I really like the slide windows on the X5 Legion, and I like the fact that it already had iron sights installed. I figured I could mount a budget optic and save a little bit of money, but what I ultimately decided was that the front slide serrations had more utility than the window cuts. I uh, decided that I didn't want the iron sights to clutter up my window. Also, if I went with the Legion, I may have had to use an adapter plate for the optic, which I really didn't want to do. Trying to figure out which footprint the Legion has uh, is also a little bit confusing. I think the only two direct mounting options are the Delta Point Pro and the Sig Romeo Pro, which is not to be confused with the Sig Romeo 1, uh, because uh, apparently that one won't work. Uh, I think I also read that some new slides are shipping with the RMR cut, but I called Sig Customer Service and they didn't really confirm the RMR would fit. 
So I would take that with a grain of salt. Uh, either way, I, I really didn't want the headache of trying to get an optic to work. The Max comes with the Romeo 3 Max optic already installed. Uh, so you really have nothing to worry about. Also, the magazines. So the Legion comes with three 17 round magazines. The Max comes with four 21 round mag. You're really going to want the 21 rounders for shooting matches. The mags are like 50 bucks a piece. So if you bought the Legion and wanted four 21 rounders, you'd be looking at an extra like 200 bucks. They might make base plates uh, for the 17 rounders to extend them out and make them legal. But, you know, it's 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 still going to cost some money and it's still going to be a little bit of a headache. Also, the Max is the most expensive 320 you can buy because the optic is wrapped up in the price. So that's kind of cool to say that you got the most expensive one. Last thing to mention, these guns are modular. So you can buy a new barrel, uh, you can buy a new slide, frame, anything you want, really. You know, Wilson Combat makes frames. A lot of different manufacturers make slides with really cool milling cuts and slot serrations and all kinds of neat stuff. So if you want to change up the format of the gun later, you can. You know, if you want to make it like a defensive pistol or something like that. A lot of people compete with these too. So there's a big aftermarket of holsters and parts gun belts and um you know kydex holsters and they have like a lot of gas pedals too like a um a lever that sticks out right here and you can get a, a an even better purchase on the pistol with uh you know the gas pedal also if if you built the gun in this configuration on the sig website you're going to spend a lot more you know i don't have exact pricing at the moment but I considered, you know, buying all the parts to, you know, build one from the SIG custom shop and then buying the 320 FCU separately. You know, I was thinking of, you know, buying maybe a, a full size 320 the FCU already installed and then kind of piecing it together. But it, it's going to come out more expensive like that as well. So I think the 320 Max is a pretty good value because you get, you know, four 21 round, round magazines and the optic already installed. The optic is, is pretty expensive if you buy it separately. And that is, you know, a big uh, price driver for this pistol. Um, also, just for fun, here it is compared to the 365. So, if you're ever curious about the size difference. Uh, so, I guess that's all I have. The, the 320 Max is a really comfortable, fast, and accurate gun. It soaks up recoil. It's a fun shooter, whether you're stall shooting or running around in a competition.